Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to take you through the various principles that have shaped my teaching style throughout my homeschooling journey. So when I first started homeschooling, I stumbled upon various approaches out there on how to educate kids. And uh, you know, there is uh, the traditional approach, the classical Charlotte Mason's unit studies, unschooling, a Montessori approach. I stopped to ask myself, what is my goal in homeschooling? You know, I knew that I want my kids to love learning, uh, to imbibe everything that they've learned, to carve their own path. Uh, of learning and finally to give to the world uh, the things that they have learned. I started to winkle out uh, various ideas from these uh, different approaches and uh, started to implement them uh, with my kids. And over the years, I have uh, finally developed my own principles, guiding principles that have shaped my style in teaching my kids. And so today I want to share them with you. The first principle is for my kids to have a relationship with God. You know, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, I cannot wake up 10 years from now and think that my kids would have a wonderful relationship with God and a strong walk of faith if I haven't, uh, you know, consciously and uh, trained them in the ways of the Lord. So, you know, every morning we wake up before we Home, start homeschooling uh, you know we read our Bibles uh, my kids we pray together and once a week my husband does a Bible study with them and uh, you know it's not just reading our Bibles and uh, praying but also we as parents uh, put a conscientious effort in living a lifestyle of faith uh, to set an example for our kids and you know making sure that our kids have a wonderful church life and in my endeavors to train my kids and to teach my kids, this is one principle I really want them to grasp and uh, develop their relationship with God. The second principle is that I would love to see my kids strike a bond with learning, not just with a subject, but with learning itself. Over the years, I've tried various ways to have my kids love learning. And there are a few things that have really resonated with me. The first one is, uh, the concept of living ideas. Now what are living ideas? Living ideas are got from living books. Now this method I've uh, taken from the Charlotte Mason's approach. The approach is named after the British uh, educator Charlotte Mason. Now what is a living book? Uh, when you read a living book, it comes alive to you. Now as opposed to dry facts that you would read in a textbook. Now, if you want to teach your kids the various landforms or the various water bodies, uh, you know, in the textbook, it would just list it out for you. It would just tell you dry facts. But in a living book, uh, it would tell you a story. It would probably tell you a story of a voyage, taking you through the various landforms, the various water bodies, making connections with wildlife and uh, uh, maybe with the lumber industry. And, but all in the form of a story where it touches the child's uh, emotions, it fires uh, his imaginations and in the process the child forms a relationship with what he's learning. Now I use this method uh, with all subjects except maths like history, geography, science and you know I've seen my kids really bond with uh, learning itself. Uh, they love to know what they're learning and uh, they enjoy it. It's very riveting and gripping. Uh, however, there's like one uh, challenge I do face is because uh, when it comes to science, uh, the, you know, there are many living books and the topics are universal. But when it comes to history and geography, there are very few books that are available that talks about, uh, you know, Indian history and the geography of uh, India. So so I, uh, I've learned to adapt, you know, suppose we're talking about hills of various countries, then I, you know, when it comes to my kids, we, uh, uh, Naraya, we sit down with a map and we look through the various hills that are 
you know in india and but she can relate to it because she's already studied it in a living way so with nathan i once we've learned few uh, you know history stories i ask him to research about that particular uh, you know a person online and he he go, he does his own research and he comes up with his own study on the same so just constantly making it more alive than just reading facts from a textbook now that comes to the second point in the same frame is when i read those books to him i have him uh, uh, you know, even Nara and Nathan, both of them take mental notes of what they're listening. Like uh, initially, I would just tell them to narrate it back to me, but then I realized there was a very miss. There's a missing uh, integral part between you know hearing me speak and having them narrate it back to me, and that is the uh, fact that they need to have the habit of taking mental notes so nathan has his own way of doing that he takes his book and he writes down points while i'm reading if he needs he's he's quite good in remembering what i say and read but then when it comes to names he i see him uh, jotting down points where it uh, or uh, names of you know kings or places that he needs to just remember whereas narai has formed her own ways she draws like icons if i'm reading about a beaver and what it's eating she'll just draw them in her book so she keeps a mental note of what i'm reading while i'm reading it and uh, uh, and Nathan, when he reads his own book, he just underlined few points to keep a mental note of what he's just read. Uh, and then, then it brings me to the third point in the frame is, you know, after I've, we've read the book or they've read it, they have to narrate it back to me, either orally or written. Now, this is also uh, taken it from the Charlotte Mason's approach. And what I feel it has really helped my kids is in paying attention and being able to express themselves uh, orally and in writing. So, uh, so that's the whole idea about uh, living ideas and living books. But when it comes to a few subjects in science and maths, I uh, use the ICSC curriculum as a guide and I, I teach them like from the textbook. We have uh, tests, we have question and answers and uh, you know with Nathan I go the more um, analytical approach where I ask him a lot of questions and hows and whys so I make him do research uh, researches online and when it comes to Narai I help her memorize few things and uh, because at that age they're good in memorizing things and uh, and maths is strictly follow the ICSC curriculum because it has really worked well for me and my kids and also training them uh, for the future exams when they do get their board exams. So it's not just through books that kids learn, you know, uh, they learn through observation. So uh, earlier on, you know, I we used to go on nature walks where my kids would uh, take uh, leaves and, uh, you know, various things and, uh, you know, put them in their books and we used to click pictures of insects and learn about them and they used to draw them and uh, that I've taken from the Charlotte Mason's approach but over the years I thought like Nathan's learning so much even at home like uh, he loves electronics he is uh, constantly looking up on uh, you know motors and and uh, even through our lifestyle and through what we, he reads, he's constantly learning things. So I came up with a thing called an observation journal where uh, the child actually forms their own, uh, uh, carves their own path to learning. So each time he learns something new, he just records them in the book. Even Naraya, she finds something down, she wants to just journal it and she asks me, mommy, what's this? Then I, we can research it together and she's learning. Uh, just something new that she's seen. It doesn't matter what, whether from nature, or from something from the home, or something that she's just learned. Maybe a new word that she's just learned. She just writes it down, and she has her own. Uh, uh, she de she develops a, her own way of learning, and there's no fear in doing something right or wrong. That they they just had their own observation journal. So the last point in the frame of teaching them to strike a bond with learning itself is to give them the time to. Uh, either learn a new skill set or to improve something that they're learning already to just let them uh, set their goal in that particular uh, path they want to learn or that particular thing that they want to learn and just give them free time to learn it so sometimes we just take a week off and uh, uh, you know Narai says uh, we're going to I ask Narai what do you want to learn like 
maybe you just want to learn how to play a piano so then that whole week she spends a lot of you know learning just one in her instrument and maybe few things that she wants to concentrate on maybe just drawing and ballet so i just give her the time to set her goals and to complete it so helping them to set a goal and achieve them is also a part of this uh, learning process and developing that love for learning so under the whole idea of striking a bond with learning either through living books or through their own observations or through setting a time to chase their goals and achieving them in the end of the whole thing like the question that i want to ask them is not how much have you learned but did you care for what you learned so if they did care what they learned for what they learned then they will obviously imbibe it and uh, you know that your kids have actually learned something the third principle is training the habits of the mind now i don't want my kids just to have you know to brush their teeth and do their beds and help me with chores which is important but you know to train their minds to do things like uh, the quality of uh, you know rising to an occasion adapting to situations uh, to the quality of hard work paying attention uh, social skills observations and uh, these are the things that just don't come second nature to people sometimes it needs to be trained so uh, this is something that we i try and conscientiously and actively do to train my child my last principle is that of nutrition and physical activity uh, this might seem a very uh, might seem common knowledge but it's a, nonetheless the integral part to a child's uh, education good nutrition and physical activity it helps boost mental health so it's very important to make sure that your kids have good nutrition and is uh, physically very active so all these have primarily been the principles that have shaped my teaching style over the years and i hope this has blessed you and as we all look for ways to impact and uh, our kids and to make them better learners i just want to leave you with a word of encouragement from the bible it says in proverbs 16:3 come into your ways to the lord and your thoughts shall be established and your plans will succeed so you can apply this to your uh, to your uh, plans for your kids and i just want to wish you all the best in your endeavors to school your kids